Hello, and thank you for joining me. I recently bought a manual fluid extractor and dispenser from Harbor Freight. That means that you do not need a compressor, electricity, you use it just like you would a bicycle pump. And it comes with a pretty decent owner's manual, so I'm not gonna go over every single detail. It's pretty self-explanatory. The best part is you don't have to crawl under the vehicle in order to change the motor oil. If you want to change the filter, that's a different story, but this video is not about changing an oil filter along with the motor oil. The owner's manual explains that you can actually change the motor oil every 7,500 miles or so. Let me find the page. Yeah, change the oil every six months or 7,500 miles. And then at the bottom it tells you replace the oil filter at the first oil change and every second oil change thereafter. So I'm going to have to break this into two parts uh, all in one video. And for this part one, I'm using my buddy's 1973 stingray and uh, we'll see how it goes. So you start pumping the extractor and you'll see there it goes the, uh, the, the old motor oil by vacuum it's just sucked into the, uh, the holding tank and you just yeah. build enough vacuum by pumping it and then just takes over and uh, it just keeps extracting the, uh, the motor oil or any fluid for that matter. We did run into a small issue because of our own doing. Basically we pushed one of the hoses too far into the uh, adapter and it created an air pocket I think so we thought it was the pump that it was faulty and uh, it was just our own stupidity basically but um, we got about uh, a quarter and a half out of the uh, of the engine and you'll see the um, the rest once we uh, we lift the car and we uh, unplug the oil pan at this point we really didn't know what to expect and once we unplugged the oil pan uh, it was obvious that our first attempt had been a fail because of all the oil that was gushing out of the uh, motor so I'm not blaming the equipment. It was obvious that we had that um, air pocket, whatever caused the, uh, the thing to stop working. But um, yeah, it was our first try ended up in uh, being a, f a failure. I'm gonna try to explain what I did here that caused the issue with our first attempt. The uh, extraction hoses are different sizes. You have on my right, you have the 3 8 uh, hose, and then you have the uh, 5 16 And they're basically mated by that coupler in the middle, which has like a, a shoulder sort of inside to compensate for the difference of sizes. I pushed the, uh, the 5 16 hose past uh, to about there inside the 3 8 hose and I think that kind of created some kind of a, a I don't know a vacuum lock or an air pocket or something and it basically stopped working so that was to totally my mistake and I take responsibility for that that is not the uh, faulty equipment or anything like that so if you run into a similar situation you might, may want to look into that because that could be the cause Okay, so I'll try this with the, this is my car and uh, have a cold engine, which means the oil is all in the, the bottom of the pan. And there it is. That, that's bottomed out there. So we're gonna try this again, hopefully with better results. 
Okay, so as you can see there, the line goes all the way to the to the pump. And I'm gonna set this up and start pumping and if everything works properly, you're gonna see the dark oil run into the tank. This should uh, generate enough vacuum to uh, suck some fluid for a while. So as soon as it slows down, I'm gonna keep on pumping. It's still going. So I hope it's, it's very hard to see down here. Give it a few more pumps. to maintain the vacuum. So I, I still hear the, uh, the fluid going in there. I'm, I'm hoping it is anyway. But so far, it's, it's, uh, it's about it. Two, almost two and a half liters, two and a half quarts basically. It's about a one to one ratio. Okay, so, so far we are at uh, four and a quarter, almost four and a half quarts. So if we get to about five or thereabouts, that would mean that it drained most of the of the oil. By this point, the pump was just mostly sucking air, and uh, it's kind of almost impossible to really tell where the tube is, in you know, in relation to the uh, to the bottom of the oil pan. So that is one thing that I really didn't care about. I am guessing because of the location of the dipstick that the extraction hose would come down here. However, if it kind of curls or whatever and it lands here, you're gonna still have a whole bunch of oil in this portion of the pan. Just wanna bring that to your attention just in case. But I'm getting ready to loosen the drain plug. Um, so let me get started and we'll see. I have my catch pan here. We will see how much oil is left in there. All right, let's hope I don't make a mess. So yeah, let's see what happens. And I did, of course, hit the floor because there wasn't a whole bunch of oil in there. It never fails. <sighs> okay, some final thoughts. Uh, I am gonna return mine. I already called the company to start that process. It's, um, you know, let me tell you, the machine is, is very well made and it works fairly well. Unfortunately, it doesn't remove all the old uh, motor oil, which I think is the, uh, the whole purpose of having this thing. It doesn't really save you a lot of time. Maybe I'm old-fashioned when it comes to this. I just, I'm gonna keep doing things the old-fashioned way. They seem to work just fine for me, even though it may take a little longer. And I like to um, replace the oil filter every time that I do an oil change. So, if you're gonna get one, I recommend just getting the extractor. This kind of combo thing is, is overkill, and I think it's, it's really not practical. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.